Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and today I wanted to show you how to create a basic mage deck using only the cards that you have available after finishing the tutorial in Hearthstone. So to create a new deck, we have to first go to my collection down here at the bottom. Go to new deck, which should be available at the bottom of your deck list. And uh, as you can see, this is a completely new account for me. I have not leveled up Mage at all or unlocked any of the other classes. So I literally only have what's available to me right after finishing the tutorial. Go ahead and choose the class. Then we'll be presented with all the cards we have available to ourselves, which include the five basic Mage uh, spells and uh, all of the neutral minions that you get for free. In terms of spells and neutral minions, uh, I would say that class cards are generally stronger than neutral minions, and neutral minions you pick and choose based on what your situation calls for. The deck I'm going to try to make today is going to revolve around board control, which means you want to put minions in that are going to trade well with the minions your opponent has on the board. This way, after a few turns go by, you're trading minions, you're getting value out of your minions, sometimes getting two minions for one, that you'll have a board and they won't, which puts them at a disadvantage and will allow you to go for their face and just control everything that they have on the board. The reason we're not going for an aggro deck is because with basic cards, you don't quite have the minions you need for them, plus mage isn't that great at aggro. And a late game deck does need some of the legendaries that you only get after unlocking a bunch of packs. So a deck that's solid, good in the mid game, good for controlling your opponent's board, is probably the ideal deck you want to go for. So anyway, as far as all these five spells go, they're all pretty solid. Arcane Explosion's probably the weakest of them, because it only deals one damage even though it's an AoE. But uh, we'll put all five of them in, because they are better than a lot of the basic minions that you get. Plus. As Arcane Explosion is the only AoE that you have, it's situationally good if your opponent's board gets out of hand. As far as minions go, we're going to want to try to have a pretty even curve that revolves around having a bunch of 3s, 4s, and 5s for the mid game, but not too much late game because we need to end the game before we hit the late game where opponents start playing their fancy cards like a Ragnaros. In terms of one cost minions, the best one I would recommend is Elven Archer here, allowing you to deal one damage to an opponent minion. Uh, sometimes this allows you to kill a minion before it hits the board. Two drop minions, uh, Acidic Swamp Ooze is a very good card that you will see in even pro decks. And because we don't have too many options available, I'm going to put two of them in, in our deck. Uh, against opponents that are playing warrior classes, uh, hunters, or shaman, even paladin, you can destroy their opponent's weapon, which is very good, get value out of that, prevent your opponent from killing your minions off. That's what makes Acidic Swamp Ooze good. Are there two drops which are pretty reasonable? Cobalt Geomancer isn't something that would normally be ran, but because we have limited cards available for us, and we are playing a mage with six cards that will benefit from the spell damage, fireball, arcane explosion, and arcane missiles. I'll go ahead and put one in. Out of these cards, it's probably best with arcane explosion because this will literally double the damage that arcane explosion does, making geomancer into arcane explosion something of a pseudo consecration. Uh, consecration is a paladin card which deals two damage to everything on your opponent's side of the field, including the enemy hero. Cobalt Geomancer Arcane Explosion will deal 2 damage to all minions, but it will leave you with a minion on the field too. Um, aside from that, Novice Engineer is alright. It used to be a lot better when it had 2 HP, but because we're going to need a little bit of card draw, I'll throw one of those in there. It's good for cycling, that's about it. 3 drop minions, these two are rubbish. We'll go over here. Razor Fin Hunter, in terms of your basic minions, is pretty good because it summons a 1-1 boar. If you combine that with its 2 attack and 3 health, that comes out to a total of 3 attack and 4 HP, which is quite good actually. How you know a minion has good stats is if you double the mana cost of a minion, which in this case comes out to 6, then add all the stats together, which in this case comes out to 5 plus the 2 for the boar, 
if double the mana cost is less than the total stats of the minion, then you know it's pretty good. So we'll put Evasive Fin Hunter in. Not a bad card. Shattered Sun Cleric is also pretty good because it allows you to give a friendly minion plus one plus one. If you have any kind of minion on the board, then buffing it up, say making a 1-1 into a 2-2, is very nice, especially because it'll catch your opponent off guard. They might put a minion down that they expect to trade with your minion, but by giving your minion an extra attack and health, you can either make it an equal trade, or in some cases, make it a trade where their minion dies and your minion re remains with 1 HP. This makes Shattered Sun Cleric a pretty good board control card, so we'll throw that in too. Now if we take a look at our mana curve, it's uh, not too bad right now, kind of early in the game, but we still have 10 cards to go through. Chillwind Yeti goes back to the double mana cost thing I was talking about, 9 stats for 4 mana. Makes it a very good card, and it's kind of been a staple in the game for a long time. It has fallen out a little bit of favor just because there's new cards in the game thanks to the Naxxramas expansion, but it's still a very, very solid card. Gnomish Inventor is a card I'm going to throw one of in because we're going to want a little bit more card charge just so we can last to the mid to late-ish game at least. This brings our total card draw to four cards that do it. Arcane Intellect, draw two cards, Novice Engineer, draw a card, and Gnomish Inventor, draw a card. Um, this will allow us to last past the early game and at least compete in the mid game if not win in the mid game. Since that brings our 4s to 7, I'd say that's plenty. In terms of 5 cost minions, I'm a big fan of Dogscale Healer. It restores 2 health to all friendly characters, including your hero. So if you have a wounded uh, minion on the field, which is very likely in a board control deck where you're trying to trade, make trades where your minion survives, then bringing Dogscale Healer onto the field will bring them back up to full health, which is very nice. Aside from that, it has the same stats as a Yeti. 4-5 is a nice stat distribution. Uh, most of these other cards are kinda iffy, but Gurabashi Berserker is good in certain kinds of decks, Mage being one of them, because a Mage can use his hero power to increase the attack of the Gurabashi Berserker by 3 just by dealing 1 damage to it. Uh, that would bring this up to a 5-6, and it can get even stronger if you continue to trade. Uh, Gurubashi Berserker has the potential to get to, say, 8 attack, even 11 attack, and when the minion gets so much attack, your opponent is literally forced to respond to it or die, making it not a bad card. Uh, Archmage is a card you can consider. Um, I'm not sure I'd want to put it in just because it has 4 attack, where Boulder Fist Ogre has 6 attack for the same cost. So I'm going to go with Boulder Fist Ogre here. I kind of prefer it over Archmage. And in 7 cost minions, by far and away the best card here is a Stormwind Champion. Because Stormwind Champion is like a Shattered Sun Cleric, it will buff the minions you have on your board, allowing you to make better trades and control the board. Get more value. So, I believe that's a pretty solid deck right there. It's got a good curve, um, has some early game just so you can make the plays early game, not waste your mana. Plenty of 3, 4, and 5 drops for the mid game. It has card cycling so that you don't run out of cards. And it has a couple of late game cards so that if you draw into it, you can finish the game hopefully around turn 6, turn 7, turn 8 at the latest, really. And uh, finish your opponent off against late game decks. Hopefully, it doesn't go to turn 10 or 11, because in that situation, uh, you'll you'll probably lose just because they're gonna have better quality of cards. But against cards against decks that are pretty aggressive or are just playing weak cards, this deck should be able to trade pretty well. And uh, yeah, I'd recommend this as your starting deck for going into the game and starting to play some constructed. So thanks for watching, and I'll have more tutorials and tricks later on. See ya.